welcome. We're glad you're here with us as we gather to worship. As part of the Eucharistic Revival Year, you are invited to celebrate a Mass at the Liberty Memorial entitled Behold KC. The date is May 4, and the evening begins with a Mass at 4 and continues on until 9 p.m. with adoration and special music. Because of this event, all parishes in our diocese will not have a vigil mass, and so there will be no 4.30 mass here on Saturday, May 4th. As we begin to think about our 75th anniversary in 2025, it is time for us to put together our next pictorial directory. There is a sign-up table with information in the gathering space. We are hoping and praying for a fabulous turnout of photos as we are all part of the St. Therese community. And this directory will take us forward toward our 75th anniversary. Sign up to get your family photo in this next directory. We want to see you. It's time for our next blood drive. Sign up to donate the gift of life. The drive will be here on April 22nd from 12 noon to 6 p.m. Join us next Sunday evening at April 21st at 6.15 here in church for a holy hour as we continue to pray for vocations. Now we will hear from representatives of St. Pius High School. Do we have our speaker here from St. Pius? Apparently not. Our music selections for this Mass may be found in your worship aid located in the back of your hymnal on page 2. Our entrance hymn is Ye sons and daughters found on page 13 of your worship aid. Let us stand and sing as we begin. come to share in the joy of this very special, wonderful day. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing on the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, 
but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, sorry. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going, hold on. Oh my goodness. The two disciples recounted that what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Two things that most people find frightening, a corpse and a ghost. One is a body without a spirit, the other is a spirit without a body. Jesus rose from the dead in a real human body, still bearing the wounds of his passion. The resurrection of Jesus is something real. Jesus doesn't simply live on the way the dream of Martin Luther King Jr. lives on or the way that some people think that Elvis is still alive. Jesus entered into the world through a human birth. 
in a real, concrete, visible, physical, tactual way. He came not as someone like us, but as one of us. And he came to make himself one with us. As Jesus' entry into the world was marked by a real human birth, so too Jesus' resurrection from the dead, his birth into new life, is something that comes in a real, concrete, visible, physical, tactual way. Look at my hands and my feet. Touch me. A ghost does not have flesh and bones. Do you have anything to eat? Jesus is truly risen in a true body, a body that has flesh and bones, a body that eats. The risen Christ is neither a corpse nor a ghost. Jesus is present in a real but glorified body. He wasn't merely resuscitated the way Lazarus rose from the dead. He still bears his wounds, and yet he isn't subject to physical limitations. All this tells us not just something about Jesus, but about ourselves. Each time we recite the creed, we profess our belief in the resurrection of the body. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. We say that every week. In the end, new life will involve not just our souls, but our bodies. Whether in heaven or in hell, our bodies will be involved. Our goal is to share in the eternal life and love of God, in the life of the Trinity, both soul and body. Like those early disciples, as Christians, we're witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. To be baptized is to share in Jesus' death and resurrection, his paschal mystery. A separated soul certainly lives on, but it's incomplete without a body. Like Jesus, we will have a new bodily existence truly related to our bodies in this life and yet glorified and free from organic disabilities. Christ will raise up on the last day those who have been faithful. It is also true, though, in one sense, we have already risen with Christ. Our resurrection will take place in a real but glorified body. Jesus is our head, and in baptism we become members of his body, what is called the totus Christus, the whole Christ. And so in Jesus, our head, we already share in that new life. At every celebration of the Eucharist, the saving action of Jesus' death and resurrection is made present to us, and we renew our faith in the risen Lord so that we might share in the eternal life of God in both body and soul, so that we might receive and respond to the love of God with lives of intentional faith, lives of intentional faith in every little way. God is love. God loves us. God desires our love. Here in the Eucharist, the word continues to be revealed to us and here in the Eucharist, Jesus continues to come into our world in a real, concrete, visible, physical, tactual way under the form of bread and wine. He continues to come and continues to be truly present. He continues to make a gift of himself to us. He gifts himself to us and asks us to gift ourselves to him. He wants to be close to us, but maybe we don't want to be too close. Yes, I want to be close, but maybe not too close. If I'm too close, it might make too big a difference in my life. It might, it might cramp my style some. 
Well, a cramped style isn't really what Jesus is about. He's about sharing in the joy of new life and holding on to the things that we think are going to make us happy but don't aren't really going to lead to what Jesus wants to give us. He no longer asks for us something to eat. Instead, he gives himself to us as our food. He asks for our faith. He asks for our love. And in the Eucharist, we receive this gift that some of our young people are going to receive for the first time today. And I tell the children, I hope you remember everything about this day. April 13th, 2024. It was a very warm day, probably the warmest day of the year so far. Hope you remember your family with you. Hope you remember the party. Hope you remember the presents. But most of all, hope that you remember that this is the day that Jesus comes to give himself to you in a very special way. He doesn't simply want to be around you. He doesn't want to be next to you. He wants to dwell within your heart. And that's what happens when you receive communion. Not just your first communion, but at every communion. And we offer congratulations to the parents. Thank you for bringing your children to this moment. Today, you give them one of the greatest gifts you will ever give them in their lives. And that's not an exaggeration. The Eucharist is one of the greatest gifts you will ever give them. And it's important to keep them close to this marvelous gift that Jesus gives to us this gift of himself. And we hope that this example of these children might make us remember the day of our first communion, relive it, think of some of the details, but most of all, to remember that the same is true. Jesus comes and doesn't want to dwell around us or next to us. Jesus wants to dwell in our hearts. For Pope Francis, our Bishop James, and all church leaders, may they continually call all the faithful to be true disciples and powerful witnesses of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our St. Therese community, may we be willing to preach God's forgiveness of sins that come about by Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national leaders, may they strive for peace and justice 
as they address our many national issues and international challenges. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For true peace in our world, particularly in the Middle East, Ukraine, and Haiti, and for the protection of all who risk their lives to defend that peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our children who are receiving their first Holy Communion this week, May they know the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are lonely or are alone, may they be lifted by friendly smiles, kindly words, and listening ears, and the helping hands of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, may they know the healing touch of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, uh, especially Pablo Relina uh, Sr., Doyne Parisi, Charles Tony Louth, son of Jill, and nephew of Judy, may they know eternal life with the resurrected Lord, and may their families and friends find peace in a special way at this Mass. We pray for the living and deceased members of the Blydenburg and Sweeney families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us, may we be an Easter people rejoicing in the Lord's resurrection and shouting hallelujah. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear these prayers to be offered in the Spirit through Christ our risen Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown, down, are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and is rising the life of all, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. 
And even the heavenly hosts, with the, even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. rightly gives you praise for to your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your lot, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, 
through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should return to my word, but only to say the word of my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Uh, two brief announcements. Number one, again, congratulations to our first communicants. And number two, uh, again, if you haven't yet, sign up to get your picture taken for our new photo directory. We want to have a big turnout of all our parishioners. This is in preparation for our 75th anniversary next year. Uh, you can do so uh, at the table to your right as you exit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to God.